What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 138 of the <clears throat> Anime on Draft podcast. I'm your host this week, Rolando, joined by Drew, Alec, so he's not last this time, and Mark. <laughs> Hello. You're the last one this time, Mark. <laughs> Good, sir. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. Well, um, well. Well, to get things started off, so we have the uh, the beer we're drinking, or these guys are drinking. I'm not drinking. I got to work after this. But uh, <clears throat> is the Sierra Nevada 40th Hop Anniversary? Yeah, show them their uh, bottle, Drew. What it? Uh, hoppy anniversary. Hoppy, hoppy anniversary ale. Hoppy anniversary sounds pretty good too. Though I like that. Yeah. Hop anniversary. Hop anniversary. Hop around. There you go. Alec, your lighting looks a bit better, so. Looks like we can read it. Yeah. Uh, Hoppy ooh, Anniversary Ale. Nice. Limited <clears throat> edition. 12 flounces. 12, 12 flounces. flounces. If you're <clears throat> uh, unfamiliar with the Imperial units, it's a... Uh, I, I don't know the equivalent, but they're not flounces. <laughs> it's flounces. <laughs> if you're not, if you're not familiar not with the, not the Alec Pops. Imperial system... <laughs> Then it's, by the more accurate it's one bottle. measuring system of uh, handfuls. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> handfuls. What is handfuls this like? Handfuls and shakes. This is probably like <laughs> six handful ounces. Handful six, ounces? Six, is yeah. that what you said? Hand, handful ounces. Can't handful combine ounces. Them. Yeah. You can't combine them. In my imperial work. metric system, you can. Uh, if, oh, you're not familiar, if you're not familiar with the Alec imperial metric system... You got your your pinches, uh, your dashes. <laughs> you got your, got your handfuls. You got your tip of the sure noses. That, uh, flounces. I'm pretty sure and flounces. This, this was uh, this was what they were fighting for in Azur Lane is to uh, establish which uh, <laughs> which which unit system is dominant. Yeah. Clearly, they're all fighting. Right. Yeah, uh, the uh, they were fighting <clears throat> for Alex Imperial System. It mm -hmm. was actually called Alex Imperial System. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ooh. it was over yeah, whoever yeah. got to use my. Homemade the, imperial system. The United My imperial metric system. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, seeing as the Germans and the Japanese are more scientific, they didn't want that. So uh, yeah. they uh, they decided to declare war on Alec. Yeah, well, yeah, too sense. bad they lost. Oh, they did wow. they, though? Yeah, because I have yeah. God and anime on my side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I believe you. Um... <laughs> Other than in the that, that nice little segue, um, let's uh, get into our main beer, not beer topic, main anime topic. Ooh. So for our Orishiri, we've been watching Nisei Monogatari, and we are on episode four. I don't yes. remember the name of the episode, but it, it is the episode it did where... Ha it did happen. It is the episode where Shinobu finally speaks. She speaks. She speaks. So, uh, Alex, since you're you're new <clears throat> to this, um, yeah, yeah, I think Mark, you've <laughs> at least seen this episode, right? No, no. The last episode was, a, was the, like up to where I had stopped watching before, so this was a new one for me. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that she spoke. <laughs> All right. Well, yes. we'll find out what bo the both of you think about it. But uh, mm. what, like, th there's a lot that happens in this episode, and I didn't really notice any of this the first time because. Obviously, I didn't know about a lot of stuff that happens afterwards, but like, what did you guys mm. think about kind of what happens? I know there's the whole issue, there's the stuff with um, Tsubasa is there, <clears throat> and she she's trying to help Karen and Skihi, and then mm. there's the whole bath scene that takes basically the whole episode. Seventy five percent of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh. I didn't recognize Hanakawa at first. I, I like until they said her name. I was like, wait, what happened? I yeah. missed something. She cut her her. She cut. She and cut I off. was wondering. I I was wondering if that's a drastic change or if it's because everything's out of order, and that's something we find out later. So one of the running memes in this show is don't get attached to anyone's hairstyle because it constantly changes. We've already seen <clears throat> Converse change. Hanakawa's <clears throat> changed. Um, hmm. Sengoku's change a little bit, so don't get attached to anyone's hair. But uh, you're kind of on the right track in terms of like things happening out of order. Um, that is one explanation as to why her hair is like that. Okay, 
I thought the same thing too. I was like, did, is this like a different segment or there's something that happened before this that we might go to later? <clears throat> well, I don't know. We'll see. No, and then, know. well, then I guess on that, at the very, very end, they were talking about <clears throat> Hanakawa and then they were saying, maybe, uh, is she a fake? Is that another theory? Because they were saying that I read all those stupid little words at the very, very end. <laughs> and I had to read, I read one segment and then went back and read all the other ones. <clears throat> And is that talking so fast? Yeah, because I was like reading it and I was like, oh, crap, I can't read as they're switching this and switching. This. So I just chose one and then read the other one. Otherwise, it didn't make yeah, any yeah. sense. There was a, a segment in it like <clears throat> and they were just talking so fast and there was something else going on in the background. <laughs> the TV. It was just, yeah. Yeah. yeah TV. It was nothing but text on the screen. I was like, oh, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. That one. I didn't even pause. I was like, nope, mm -mm, not trying. <laughs> not dealing with that. It made my brain hurt. So yeah, it was one of those ones where like my eyes were like, like flipping yeah. in different directions. Yeah, I, was like, like, I didn't know. Which I should one do, do I that? read? Do I read down here or down here? Yeah. Do, I, do I go over, over there? The, yeah. the worst thing is when uh like this is not related to that but you know some of the the streaming sites will put the subtitles right over another subtitle mm -hmm. and yeah. this happens particularly in pet where they put yeah, the english subtitles the over the japanese subtitle <laughs> for the chinese and you can't and read like, what it says how, how are we supposed to read this it's the same font yeah. not font but it's, like the same color <laughs> like, yeah. 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 it's so hard to read yeah so the uh yeah they nope. they've been doing what was like kind of weird is like i noticed that they've been switching some of the text so it's like if there's like a static text like a, like an image <clears throat> in the background they'll translate that but it's like on the bottom and then like what they're saying is like it's on like the top, top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's just poor formatting honestly yeah so sometimes like but they'll switch that every now and then and it completely throws me mm -hmm. off yeah. Like yeah the tv part yeah and that's like, not oh, intended wait. that's just bad that's just bad yeah okay because i'm like <laughs> If there's some sort of symbolism behind this, it's stupid, and I don't no, care. <laughs> no, just bad, just bad, bad editing. Bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I actually I had I had a couple questions that I wrote down. Um, one of them was why is it weird that he was calling his sisters Chan? I don't understand that. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> normally in why? when you're very familiar with with people, this is like very close friends, uh, you know, significant others, or or family. Uh, uh -huh. normally you don't have, you don't add, uh, honorific. The, honorific. the honorific at the oh, end. You usually just call them by their name. I see. So the, the, the reason why she pointed that out is like, oh, you call them that <clears throat> it's, it's, it makes him seem very childish. And so <laughs> like, there's the whole issue where his sisters are like yelling at him <clears throat> because he's like, oh, where are you? not a kid anymore trying to grow up whatever and oh, then in the back. he's yeah. still kind of calling them with their with their honor the chan uh honorific at mm -hmm. the end i see so it's seen as childish mm. and yeah it mm. also shows like sort of <clears throat> him trying to keep a certain distance away from them as well cool excellent excellent sorry point. i was I like just curious <laughs> good question yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah, because I kind of thought the same thing, but I just figured it was like that he wasn't trying to use, or he he was just so used to using honorifics. I didn't think about him being sort of like childish in that sense. It's good, uh, good observation. My other yeah. question was, where the fuck do they live? Because <laughs> yeah, it looks like an yeah. abandoned <laughs> warehouse church, like right, it's... right before you jumped into the chat. That's exactly what I asked Drew. <laughs> Where the Drew fuck is like saying in Japan somewhere. I'm like, yeah, but like, what kind of house yeah, do they live in? It's like, like a warehouse. They're loaded, dude. <laughs> it's crazy. It's I'm like, your bathroom a budget house. Is a, a shop budget house. Is a whole church. Like, their bathroom is a lake. Yeah, yeah their bathroom is bigger than <laughs> like everyone else's living, con living yeah. spaces currently. And then there's just this <laughs> single person tub sitting in the middle right and that's, in the middle that's all there is that and weird pillars and stained glass windows and stained glass windows. Yeah, it's just right. it's just like super stylized like i wouldn't take you know any of that stuff like seriously it's just like this shows like very grandiose in a lot of ways and it's yeah. like that's one of the ways that it does it it's like a lot of color or like <clears> just like grandiose like settings yeah have we, have we just... seen it outside of the house i think yeah we have, right? first episode right it's the yellow house oh. it's like yellow, yeah it's like a big yellow house 
Yeah, I was just uh, like, what the, the big fuck? <laughs> Haragi yeah. in the big yellow house. It's like a kid's show. <laughs> <laughs> not for kids. Though. Not for kids. Though. No. <laughs> no, definitely not for kids. No, not after this scene or this no. episode. <sighs> it was so uncomfortable. The end, like so, 90% yeah. of the episode. Was really? Just yeah. Like when she first came out. Naked? Yeah, I was like, this is uncomfortable to me. This is a child. <laughs> I don't it's think. Just funny that, like, she points it out to you though, like, yeah. She just kind of, I mean. Well, she even says her age is eight in yeah. Right. yeah her body mm. age is eight. Yeah. So that that is like you know unsettling. A little uncomfortable. I don't think it it I don't think it felt as uncomfortable as what we'll talk about later in pet, uh, because <laughs> it like she she's like a vampire and like it's kind of heavily stylized, so it like to me yeah. it didn't feel as weird. Cause like you don't really see anything. Well, this this kind of bring brings up uh, like the next <clears throat> thing I want to talk to you guys about, and like her style of speaking, and like how like the the reason why it doesn't seem awkward to me is kind of like what you're alluding to there, Roland. Is like she's so condescending to him, and like talks like way above him um, that it doesn't it doesn't feel <laughs> like you know a child talking to an adult. It feels like a grown established person like being condescending towards um, Aradagi. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. That's why I like when I when I first heard her talk and uh, Drew, I was talking to you in chat. I was like, I like the way she speaks. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's like very, uh, it's not really commanding, but it's just super confident. And mm -hmm. yeah, like talking down to him almost in, in a way totally makes sense because yeah, it, it he, makes her seem like a different character. It's 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 interesting because it's like I, I can't go into like everything of like why her character is like that, but like as you watch the show, you kind of figure out like why she's sort of that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it's super interesting because she's like super like she's like insulting to him. I think she at the start she calls him like oh my sama. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like super super like condescending and insulting. Um, and then like as she like progresses through. Um, I think she calls him uh, Oji-sama um, and is like more like getting back into like being respectful. So it's like, that's kind of what the relationship is like. And you'll start to learn a little bit more about it as we kind of go through like this. Uh, and then especially into season two. Mm -hmm. I think part of what also made it really uncomfortable is I was going to watch this at work uh, to catch up <laughs> Ooh, and i'm really no. glad i didn't because i was like maybe i shouldn't given that l the last couple episodes have been rather lewd and so i started watching it i was like oh this my god this is not the season to watch at work <clears throat> yeah, no. do, do not, watch, do not yeah. watch this no. show at work really. no i thought i thought otherwise of that and i watched um madoka and um inspector a little instead. bit better and i mm. watched it outside oh, not at my I've desk. been watching A's of Kin at work, and that one feels I feel is pretty safe. Pretty wholesome. <laughs> pretty pretty safe it's just work. girls making anime, dude. Don't, pretty don't worry. Pretty safe for work, yeah. <laughs> uh, Drew, did you have any more things you wanted to, you know? Yeah, so, some other notes. Um, we talked about, like, Shinobu's style of talking. Um, at the start, Hanakawa says, um, a hero is strong, which is why they always win. Um the sisters aren't strong, uh, so they're like fake heroes pretending to be strong. Um, again, just the theme of fake. Didn't Aragi um, say that? Maybe Aragi says that. I don't remember. Um, he was talking about when she was like sick, right? When she had the fever. Uh, this, this, is bo this is before he meets before Hanekawa in, in his room. Oh, okay. Um, Aragi's also a fake. Hanekawa points that out. Um, and kind of gets called out by uh, Shinobu too. It's like, you're like half vampire. You're not all the way there. So it's like, which world are you living in? Are you in kind of brings up like the sense of like mortality um, in terms of like, you're, are you going to live mm -hmm. forever? You know, are you living for more years. Um, so that's, that's interesting. Um, and then Shinobu also mentions, and this is like probably the most important part of the episode. She says a fake can sometimes be more uh, real than the real thing. And I wrote that down. Like, yeah, she's she's talking about Kaiki too when mm -hmm. because um, she kind of she was there when she, um, Aradagi and uh, Senjuku Haru were having a conversation about him being a fake, and so Shinobu's been there. This is just like the first time she pops out, but he mentions that she's living in his shadow, so she kind of saw that she met Kaiki too, like she was there, like mm -hmm. meeting Kaiki. Um, so she knows kind of like the, I guess power or troublesomeness that he's going to cause um so that's kind of uh 
And then the last thing um, we I kind of mentioned it the humanity and connection to Shinobu. They said like they kind of like hug at the end. It's like you know we're kind of stuck with each other, which is interesting, especially the way the conversation starts off. And Shinobu like not talking to him at all between you know season one and now. I know why that is. You guys don't. Um, but like this scene is like truly touching for them to like come back together. Um, ironically, uh, you mentioned the <laughs> whole the fake can be more real than the real thing mm -hmm. and uh so ironically in a show that you now want to rant on later they do cover in inspector <laughs> a similar concept yeah. in in terms of uh, steel lady nanase and how yeah. sometimes the truth like it's not as desirable to people so they choose not to believe it so mm -hmm. the, the thing that's made up ends up becoming what's real yeah. to them so Hmm. Ironically, in, in, in Spectre just discount <laughs> discount just, Monogatari that isn't good and doesn't hit hit that they hit those notes of explaining things in in a proper way. Yeah. Just it is this way because it is great storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. This, because that's what was said. That sounds pretty good um, to me. Yeah, one thing I like I kind of noticed too. Like I don't know if this Ow. falls in the line with um, why Shinobu wasn't talking and if there was something that had gone on between Shinobu and Araragi is that they said that they had a came to a reconciliation. I thought that was an interesting choice of words. Uh, I don't know if that was just because they were like kind of bickering there in the bath, or if that was uh, there was some sort of uh, like. Uh, connotation towards something I, I, I want to I want to tell you so bad but I yeah, I, yeah. especially <laughs> yeah, since the is... house looks like a church and he said reconciliation Ooh. 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 There's also Ooh. That. that's good that's good <laughs> what if it looked like an accounting firm well then they would have chosen a different word a different reconciliation <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Man, he would have said something like you... maybe I can count on you <laughs> it's 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 really it's really sad for me because it's like you're just meeting Shinobu and it's like she's such a cool character and it's like a lot of her character like hinges on like a lot of these like different plot points that we get like throughout the season hmm. and it's not necessarily in order so it's like I don't know it's hard for me to like hold back because it's like a lot of the things that she says it's like so determined on like what where she is at that point in her life um it's just hard to not talk about it too because <laughs> she yeah, like, if, you th if, you, if you think about it you know she's like you know 500 600 years old um has lived lived for a very long time and like the shit that she's seen and you get a lot of explanation mm -hmm. of that later on um and it's like really interesting it's really cool i have one last thing we were talking about banda earlier the music <laughs> and the the scene where uh uh subasa right that's her name and um or is it Hanakawa? Hanakawa? Is that the that, same person? Uh, that's the same person. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, where there, he's talking to her, and that's the music talking in the talk. background. I was jamming no. out. No, oh, it's like the bongos. It's, it's, like, yeah, it's like bongos. I know, but it was Not like Banda. no, but it was Banda. like all Banda, it had the shakers. Bongos. It had the shakers. I was like, this feels very. <laughs> You're feeling it. You're very feeling similar. It? Yeah, I was like, wow, what a he music feeling, choice. He was feeling his Hispanic roots yeah. getting into him. I was like, oh, I gotta start shaking. <laughs> He's got to dance. I need some Banda. maracas. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, what about the whole the whole deal? So they talk about the fire starter, mm -hmm. the fire starter bee, um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what's afflicting uh, one of the fire sisters, uh, Karen. Mm -hmm. Ooh, fire and so uh, we see that there's some sort of medieval plague that had a similar issue like i obviously this is like assuming we're in japan and uh an onmyoji which is like a kind of like like a witch doctor like like a <laughs> priest that like purifies things mm -hmm. um the like there was an onmyoji that is the one that cured this kind of disease plague from the fire starter bee and uh like <clears throat> it does seem to be some sort of like fake apparition in in the sense that it's not really like a disease or anything it's just like an affliction from mm -hmm. uh from this apparition uh and now we see that that's affecting karen so like what do you what do you think uh is going to happen because they said that everyone that's afflicted by this just dies, dies yeah. 
So what do you what do you guys think is gonna happen? I know uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm not asking you. Tell us, tell us right now. Um, <laughs> tell me. I don't. I almost feel like this might kind of go the way of like uh, Sengoku, um, where they have to like confront like this like plague sickness or either that or confront whoever inflicted it, which is like Kaiki, right? Um, and see if there's a way of like reversing it. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of where I think it's gonna go. There's gonna be some sort of confrontation with with Kaiki. I don't, I don't think she's gonna die. I, I don't, don't know. think so. I don't. I don't, I don't think, think she's gonna die either. It doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't feel like there will be a confrontation. I don't know what there will be. I'm just kind of lot. I, I I can a see where you're going. Understanding. No, I just I don't know. It seems <laughs> like mutual understanding will be had. I don't know. Be okay. It just feels weird. No it just feels weird. That's all. I don't really have any any justify like any way to justify my feeling that it just feels weird and different than like it going a different direction. But I could see it going that way too, Mark. You could be right. <laughs> I could be wrong though. I could be wrong, but I have no what facts, if, no evidence whatsoever. To I'm just stand happy that, that you're liking <laughs> this season better, Alec. It's much better than to me than the last one. There's actually like stuff going on, yeah, which is cool. And you know everybody now, so it's like I just less forget their well, names. Apparently, but. apparently, except for uh, Tsubasa because she cut her hair. Yeah, yeah. she. Well, they, they, they alluded to her being a fake at the end. I'm just saying. They also I, talk about her being the most real because she like knows the most. Yeah, that was something that I kind of was like a little bit unsure of. And then they um, randomly said breasts. I don't know if that's just because she's like intelligent <laughs> and more intelligent. They did at the very end. Or, it just says breasts across the bottom. Or if that's like some underlying thing with like the the curse that she has too. If that's like uh, part of why they say that she's fake, um, because she has to hide who she is, like, you know, all the time. Um, but I, I season don't know. two, season two just <laughs> pops up more questions than I didn't even think was possible. Yeah, she's a fake normal kid. She's a real fake door. Take oh, cat. Okay. <laughs> real fake door. She's a real fake person. Yeah, 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 lusty. All right. Um, <laughs> before we get into more of a of a weird hole, uh, let's uh, move on. So back to the beers. The Sierra Beer. Nevada Hoppy Anniversary, their fortieth anniversary <laughs> ale. You believe being a brewery for forty years? It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Years. Chico, California. And being such a solid brewery too. Like this is like a brewery where I don't really think I had like a bad beer from, and yeah. it's just like a really really good staple beer. They'll come out with a banger every once in a while. That Oktoberfest. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Not, don't not talk this about year's it. or not 2019, 2018. Don't I mean, talk about like, it. <clears throat> <laughs> the hazy little thing is pretty good too. I, I feel like they don't go like crazy with their beers, like like Ballast Point. I mean, I feel like they always come back to like picking on Ballast Point, but they, they don't do like crazy stuff. They they like to keep it, you know, um, simple. Stick with like classic classic stick flavors, winners. but do it really really well. Yeah. Why yeah, not? not why reinvent the wheel? <laughs> That's right. Winners not losers. I mean, like, <laughs> leave it to McKellar to reinvent the wheel. Let them do yeah. crazy weird Other shit. Their crazy stuff. I was at McKellar today and it was oh. delicious. Well, I had always. a double double New England IPA with uh, dry hop citra. Mm. Oh, Sounds good. Nice. <clears throat> it's good. This beer is good too, though. This is good. Yeah. Oh. This is a. <clears throat> it's a it's like bit. it's it's like a maltier, lighter version of their just regular green pale I ale. Thinking that. I was gonna say that too. It's like it's, a little it's, bit maltier. I had that in it's so maltier long. and a little bit more refreshing um, because it's not as bitter. Because the other was like super hot forward. This is like less hot forward, more malt, um, and then very like I, when I first poured it out, super super carbonated, um, good mouthfeel, um, just a classic good pale hoppy pale ale. Malty anniversary is that what she call it? Yeah. Maltiversary. That's what it should be called. I would say I would say multi more than hoppy, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's not. I was expecting something very, very much like on the IPA side. I was like, thinking it was going to be like super like piney, like a piney IPA or something, but it's definitely not <laughs> that. 
I like it. And that says yeah. a lot. <laughs> I'm not a big well, fan not... of their regular pale ale, though. The green one. I don't like it. Yeah. Because it's hoppy. Fan. You, you yeah. don't like the super hoppy beers. That's my issue. But <clears> this <throat> is pretty good. Like That's their flagship is... beer, the, I know. <laughs> the original yeah. pale ale. I know. That's like the... Yeah. the that's How like the you? pale ale that everybody like was that yeah. got people in the craft. I've had craft it. Beer. I don't think it's bad. I just it's not a flavor profile I enjoy. It's interesting. Mm. That's like one of the few like craft beers that my dad will drink. That's like his go to drink <laughs> is the, the Sierra Nevada. It's he, good. he like has that on like the mantle. Like that's like his <laughs> his paramount beer. I'm like, oh, no, it's cool. Like, it's a good beer. Like, I can dig it. You know, what? there's some other crazy <laughs> here, good beers out there too. There's a list of beers that you <clears throat> could try. That start are... from here. Go to Bevmo. <laughs> yeah. Aisle yeah. two, right hand like, side, third row from the top. The is, like he's not like a drinker. Like he he he'll have like half of a beer and like he's like, all right, like that's good. That's I've had enough, you know. Mm -hmm. So just having that like those like flavors that are in that Sierra Nevada mm -hmm. pale like that's good enough for him and he's like yeah this is this is like the best I'm like, all right that's all right. that's cool all right. whatever yeah, yeah. floats his boat yeah i mean it's it's good it is there's no denying that it's not good so i don't say it's yeah. bad i just don't like it <laughs> mm. no, no, it's fair. just that's a fair. preference yeah i think I think this one is less hoppy than than I was expecting. Yeah, I, I <clears throat> like you said, I thought it was hoppy IPA. anniversary. It should be hoppy, and it's not that hoppy. I thought it would be an yeah. IPA. I mean, on the back it says it's an IPA. It's beer showcases the bold flavors and aromas of a classic West Coast IPA. Maybe we're drinking Are it. Are you wrong. sure? <laughs> yeah, it says you guys beer just said showcase. malt. Like <clears throat> all three of you said malt. It doesn't taste like an IPA <laughs> at, yeah. at all. It tastes like a pale ale. It tastes like a multi pale ale. Mm, yeah. Uh, I want to say it kind of tastes mean, like a pale ale. Like, it has malt. I wouldn't say it's the maltiest beer I've ever had, but if I'm remembering yeah, the green like, one, it's, it's not definitely like super, maltier than that. It's not like super anything. It's like, I don't know. Reminiscent no. of a West Coast pale ale, though. And Liz is yelling something. What are you, what are you yelling? <laughs> It said she says it tastes delicious because she's drinking <clears throat> one right now too. So yeah. that's what it, it is. is. I think uh, it's very drinkable. Very I give it that crisp, crisp. That is crisp what is a good it's way. Very yeah. crisp. Yeah. The like on your tongue. This is very refreshing. Good summer beer. Good food beer. I would say. Yeah. Good so palate what, cleanser. Speak, speaking of, of food, and palate cleansing, what would you pair it with? Cheez Its. Cheez Its. I was actually <laughs> the de facto answer of Alec is gonna be Cheez Its. I was, is it always I mean it's always Cheez Its, but I was actually um what I had for dinner tonight would have been really good with it, and that was a grilled chicken burrito from Roberto's. And this would actually be pretty pretty darn good with that. Um from Roberto's in yeah. Vegas. I was uh -huh. good. Yeah. <laughs> they they're like relatively heavy flavors in a burrito like that. In this kind of, like, I was thinking something kind of greasy would would go along pretty good. Greasy with this. for it, sure. It'd probably cut through it pretty well. Carne asada yeah. fries. Mm. Yeah, like a burger. I want like a, a juicy burger right now with some bacon in it. Mm. Some great. fries. Yeah. Like a barbecue, like a barbecue onion ring bacon. Bacon burger. Yeah, like a barbecue bacon onion ring burger. That would be pretty mm, good with this. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So just get some something. Tangy barbecue sauce. Yeah. I can. I can something for it. the bubbliness to like just cascade yep. over your tongue. Nice glass, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I actually yeah, like, picked it up today. Oh. It's. Cool. It makes the beer look really nice, like really pretty. There's a um, brewery right by your parents' house, Alec, and also by my house, that um, all their beer is like served in glasses like that. Mm. Black market brewing. It, um, I thought you were gonna say the glasses are from the black market. <laughs> <laughs> They're from the dark net. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, any any final thoughts on this beer before we go into the ratings? Um. The smell, to me, is not really at all like the taste. In, Wait. In what honesty. is it? It's like you don't. No, I don't think it smells like it tastes. It smells like fruity and like kind of banana. -y. Yeah, it's got like a pungent scent to it that isn't m like malt or hop or really. I think anything. it smells malty, but also fruity. I can I can get I smell like, the banana and banana. -y. The smell banana. is OK. The taste is better than the smell. The taste is better than the smell for sure. 
Yeah, like this wouldn't be one that you go, ooh, smell the floral bouquet. It's kind of like, it smells like it smells, and then you drink it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it smells like it smells, and then you drink it. And yeah. then it tastes it like, like it tastes. It. And then it tastes <laughs> like it tastes, which is better than it smells like it smells. Booty, booty foe. <laughs> Sorry, if you're listening in the car right now and not, and can't uh, <laughs> view the beer, uh, then uh, Alex's description It looks how it are, looks. <laughs> are really helping you imagine what this beer tastes like. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's oh. just, I, I'm just, you know, I'm saying. Oh. Just saying. <laughs> By the way, it looks like it looks. Just if you're in the car and you can't see it, it, it looks how it looks. That's no, how it, it's a, that's how it be. What would it be like a straw copper almost color? Yeah, I gotta go with copper. Yeah, copper. It's like lighter light in person copper. though. Light, to me. light copper. Yeah. Light chopper. And it has a nice head. The color was like Chopper. that, that tan cream color, and it's lasted for a while. I like this cup a lot though. It lets me do all this. I like stuff. that cup. Makes me feel get fancy. I want to get one. It's like the yeah. Spiegler, <laughs> Spiegler cup. I have a, I have a Tengu, like the Tengu one with like the long stem. That one's really cool. But I also really like that one. So I it's cool. Those. No. The only issue I have with it is. You're gonna warm up the beer really fast drinking out of this because you're, you're touching. There's things. more surface area for your hand to be around mm -hmm. rather than a yeah. regular. Glass. So I'm just like I'm trying to very gently touch yeah. it. Right you there. can do it, hold it like Mark. You just hold it at the top. Yeah. <laughs> the and then like it just yeah. spill out of your hand. <laughs> and then it slips out of your <laughs> hand, down. breaks, and beer goes everywhere. Oh God. This is also a beer you want to drink cold. Don't drink this warm. I bet this would be awful warm. No, this would be, <laughs> yeah. this would be the, absolutely the, terrible. The muted flavors would be more muted, is what you're saying? <clears throat> Just, it, it wouldn't taste good. I don't even want to think about it. No. <laughs> so finish that beer before it gets warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is hard for yeah, me because it still have does have like one. some hop to it. So for me, it's like I can't drink it as fast as I could like a stout. So I'm working because I don't want it to get warm. It's like a Corona. Yeah, don't let it get warm. When a Corona gets get warm, warm, you might as well just dump it. <laughs> <clears throat> All yep. right. Well, let's move on to the ratings. So, Drew, you picked this beer. <clears throat> did what? I? Yeah. You said, hey, no, I, I think, found this. Uh, I think I did. Oh, Mark, Mark, you found Mark this beer. Found it. But I said, Mark, good, good idea, champ. I'll go first. Right. I'm, the idea, um, <laughs> I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'll be Hokage. Because you're the best. I'll be Hokage. I'm going to give it a 3 5. I'm going to give it a 3 5 because uh, like, the name doesn't like indicate like what it actually tastes like. And I'm like still confused as to why it tastes like this. But it does taste good. Um, <laughs> but it kind of like loses points because it, like I don't know. It, it's advertising it as a IPA and it is not that. So three five. All right. Drink it with greasy food. Greasy food. Uh, Alec, what about you? Um, for me, it loses points for the smell. I'm not super fond of the smell, um, but the flavor is not bad and it would be really good with food. And it's a really pretty beer, especially in my new cup. Digging it. Um, but that beautiful all said, cup. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, my preference would probably be like a 325 it's not my favorite beer um <clears throat> i'd buy it again if like i could find it on sale or if i just was feeling it but probably won't all right if you could buy it again you would yeah in a heart mark oh, yeah. the the real first finder of this beer because um, <laughs> he's the best uh, saving the best I'm, for last i'm up with the times uh <laughs> I'd probably give this like a three seven five. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I think it's worth picking up and trying um, just to see how it might differ than like the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Um, see if maybe you, you like something, especially if you're you know like my my father who doesn't quite get out there and explore different types. Um, maybe maybe you want might want to give this a try. Maybe this can open up some new doors into more maltier, slightly hoppy beers. New um, real doors, but new fake doors. real doors instead opening of the fake doors. New doors. Mm. Opening Sorry. new, uh, yes. I had <laughs> opening in a theater. So many, so many different references going on. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a lot. That was that was way too many. Um, <laughs> I only made one. I blame the rest on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you get some new flavors of Terrace House. Um, yeah, this is. I think it's pretty good. Uh, 
the fact that it says it's an IPA doesn't, and it's not as hoppy as I was expecting it to be. It definitely mm-hmm. makes it lose some points, but I still think it's it's pretty good. Um, I don't know if I would get it again, but I, I'm not. I'm looking forward to getting through this six pack. Uh, I'll say that I, I think it's very drinkable and it, it's pretty good. But yeah, don't know if I would buy it again. Just it's not a beer that. I'm opposed to buying again. It's just not something I would seek out to get again. Mm-hmm. Well, or if it, it were at limited, a party, right? I would drink it. I got five more, yeah. so it's limited, yeah. right? So I only got one. It's not like you can really choose to buy it again if they don't decide no. to brew it again. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. I only bought the one, and honestly, I'll be fine with just the one. With you having, bought it, the one. they let you buy an individual one. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have singles of so much, so much stuff. Do they just like take a single beer out of like, uh, or I guess they just split up every single six? Probably. I think um, that's part of what they do because you'll grab the singles and when you're checking out, it'll pop up and say, is this part of a six pack? And they have to say no on their little screen. Mm. Um, And so I think they just take (laughs) them out and they stack them and then charge them in singles. You're probably mix and match. What what if Alex just taking a single beer out of six (laughs) pack? pack. (laughs) You can't can't do that. that. There's only one. (laughs) And you're like, oh no, yeah, there was a it was on the rack. Like, oh. Oh. All right, how much was it? Dollar ninety nine. Be like, Dollar? really? This is like free. a thirty ounce beer. Yeah, it was. It said, tr- "Take me, try me for free." Yeah, so here we are. Anybody who who's worked in retail, oh, there was no price tag on it. Oh, it must be free. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. It's the fucking <laughs> worst. I hate that. Shut the fuck. Get out of my store. I wonder. <laughs> Lee, I wonder if uh, Total Wine is doing that uh, as a way to get people to try different beers. You know how like Vons has like a thing where you can build you your own six pack. pack. Yeah, Some they have Vons, that. Yeah. They have that here too, but they since all the beers have different um, prices, uh, they charge them. They have to scale yeah, them charge them individually. individually. Yeah, yeah. Since all the beers are free. Oh yeah, no, since there's everyone. no there's no price tag there's no, on it. There's no price tag. <laughs> you just put it in the yeah. in the six pack and then yeah. exactly. you just leave. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But it's pretty what cool. A steal. I what like that yeah, I like exactly. that you can like mix steal and match. this beer. So it's cool cuz when we <laughs> oh, when we sure. go for like a style of beer, sometimes I'll grab like the one we're doing and then one or two or three maybe four others of the same style just because they look really good and I don't have to buy a whole six pack. And then I write down the ones that are good and I go back and get a six pack. (laughs) All right. You get a good system. Yeah. 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 I wish, I wish more stores did that. Yeah. Instead of forcing you to buy a six pack of a beer Mm -hmm. that you may or may not like. Mm -hmm. You do pay a little more like per bottle than you would in the six pack, but it's Mm -hmm. like what? 50 cents or a dollar. I'd rather well, do that than have to drink sixteen dollars worth of beer I don't like. Yeah, <laughs> like for for us, the rest of us, it's like we have to buy like a like a four or a six pack instead of a yep. you know, a single bottle. Yeah, a six pack of this. Yeah, I mean this is I'll drink this, but yeah, yeah. The liquor store I go to, like they have some <laughs> single bottles and cans, but it, it's like just so so random, and then most of the time it's like. Uh, There'll be like hard cider bottles or like the hard kombucha, and it's like you know, the singles. Or sometimes I think that's where I found like a KBS. There was like a single bottle of that for like three fifty or something. Yeah. It's oh, that like was three. Sometimes three fifty. Three fifty. Damn. Three fifty. That they they did not know how much they should have no. sold that yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. Nah, You're like not. and thank you. It's like all right, three fifty. Mm-hmm. I'm taking it. Thank you very much. Yep. When's the when's the Waldos come out again? Is that in April? I think it's been April. April, yeah. They they just released the Willetized one. That's uh, the mm-hmm. barrel aged um, Waldo. Kind of. <clears throat> I guess their yearly one too, though. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it comes out April part, 20th. Part part of this segue to, into Lagunitas, uh, you know, another sort of Northern California local brewery. Uh, I was actually reading the So You Want to Start a Brewery book that I had bought from the brewery a, f- a couple years ago. And mm, cool. they had talked about in, in like the third or fourth chapter how Sierra Nevada was like known as like the pale, that they were known for their pale ale. So like mm-hmm. when you thought of pale ale, you thought of Sierra Nevada. So like whenever you ordered a pale ale like at a bar, mm-hmm. you'd get a Sierra Nevada. Yeah. And so like Lagunitas, when they were still like an upstart, like, still a baby they, yeah they were they were like trying to compete and be like hey we've got a pale ale and then like none of the the bars wanted to 
have their beer on tap because it's like well when people we have that. like we have a pale ale like we mm -hmm. have the same and everyone bottom, loves it <laughs> and everyone mm -hmm. loves it so they that's how they kind of got into their branding so it's like you know there's the regular lagunitas ipa yeah and it's like the big bold ipa mm -hmm. lettering yeah. mm -hmm. it's yeah. like a stamp and uh they kind of figured like well like an ipa <clears throat> is sort of like an extension of the pale ale and we feel like this is probably going to be the direction <clears throat> craft beer would go in the future and then hence uh they were right but yeah. they really pushed good, their good beat on the market <laughs> and really got like that's kind of how they got pretty big like their mm -hmm. ipa was everywhere like you could see it was the lagunitas label ipa and yep. uh, it I kind mean, of I'm, put them on the on the I'm map. not gonna lie i don't drink a lot of ipas but when i think of ipas i think of lagunitas first and then i immediately think of the cappuccino stout and my mouth starts to water oh yeah <laughs> That is that is one of the beers I think of when I think of Lagunitas, that cappuccino mm -hmm. stout. That's I think the only beer that I will buy out a store on the spot when I when I see it in stock cuz usually there's only like 3. I'm like, "All right, and these are now mine and I'm leaving." Cuz there's fair. no price tag. So they're free. Oh, it's free. Oh, yes. it's free. So you, when you say yeah. buy the beer, you don't really mean you're buying yeah, the beer. There's no price tag. I just go, just hey, and they go, oh, those are free. Go on. Go on. Just show your ID. I go, thanks. Bye. Yeah. Just keep Gotta going. Gotta check the ID. Just keep going. Yeah. yeah. You're 21, right? All yeah. right. I got you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you look it. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on. So our news. This cup is cool. It makes news. the head... It like brings uh, out liar every time. <laughs> Any, anyways, so for our news, um, if news. you are a listener on our SoundCloud, you will lose access to our archive. So we recent, so we <clears> talked <throat> about how we'd switch to our new website. So if you want to go to animeondraft.com, you can find our current archive. Uh, it's going to be kind of weird because it'll some of the episodes <clears throat> will take you to an XML like RSS feed and uh, download it from there. But we're going to update um, each individual archived episode and make sure that you can listen to it on the website. But if you're on any of the other services, it should download just fine. Um, mm -hmm. So I think cool. the six most recent will stay on our SoundCloud. Uh, it's just like uh, going to be rotating since we switched hosting services. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. um, so well, anime on draft name. Anime on draft news, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, like I like that. <laughs> uh, our uh, so this last weekend was <clears throat> the Crunchyroll Awards, and uh, it, you can see from Drew's reaction, uh, he <laughs> very enjoyed. Uh, you like who won the hearing stuff? about that? Yeah, all the people who won the stuff. So, nice, uh, dude. Alex, thank you. <laughs> are you able to pull up the uh, the list? Uh, I'm just gonna say. I, I had I'll some of these best. picks for when we did our awards. All right, so well, we uh, did I, mob I agree with some of them. The mob psycho ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tanya, Bear with me, show. stream in case it lags. Can someone uh, link it in stream? In stream. I'm pulling it up. Who got? Who got it? I got it. So, right. on February fifteenth, were the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. I did not know this was happening. Uh, because I just kind of forgot, and yeah. I so wouldn't, we can hit it for I wouldn't have watched it anyways. It happens. Um, but yeah, we're skipping frames. Like how everyone was making fun of Funimation's end of the decade awards, we're here to make fun of the uh, the quote unquote viewers' choice awards because of like the people that watch on Crunchyroll. The majority of people are there to watch Dragon Ball Super, or Black Clover, or you know, or so My we, Hero. Yeah, or My Hero. So we know what. We kind of know what's going to win some of these categories. Yep. yep. But starting with best character design, we got Satoshi Iwataki for Dororo. We uh, talked about this show briefly. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's it's based on a manga, and they stuck pretty close to <laughs> how the manga kind of looked, but, like, updated it. So, I mean... I feel like the characters are not as unique as some of the other shows that are out there. It looks like a Tezuka manga. It looks like a Tezuka manga, yeah. I, I mean, 
but it, it's Hiro Yuki Asa. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about I, character design. The first thing I think of when I think of Dororo is not character design. No, yeah, it's the actual visual aesthetic of the show. Mm -hmm. that if is... anything, it should have won Best Drama, which was a later show, but I, I don't know. I guess right. the Vinland Saga won that one. So I, I'm just tough. not going to talk about this right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, it's making uh, the stream. Wig it's out. making the stream all wig out. All right. Yeah, it's making it lag. Well, they can listen to us talk about it and they can Lage. pull it up on stream yeah. or in chat. So. Best animation goes to Mob Psycho 100 <clears throat> season two. Um, I have one of Mark's picks. Yeah. I haven't seen yeah. this show, but what I have heard about Mob Psycho 102 is that the animation is spectacular. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, from what I remember saying for our awards is like just the use of colors and camera movement and <clears throat> just how crazy each action scene is um because it jumps around a lot but it's still very easy to follow yeah it, mob psycho 102 was it kind of it kind of blew me away some of the some of the fight scenes it's pretty insane nice yeah. so you would agree with that definitely like as good as demon slayer was and how much the internet like just completely blew blew up over episode 19 i was gonna say something else um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah mob psycho was consistently really good so definitely all right well speaking of fight scenes do you think mob psycho 100 won best fight scene which no it didn't which is and that's... a random ass category i think <laughs> yeah. i think they i'm pretty sure last year when they did this it was best fight scene sponsored by capcom or some shit like that um <laughs> But, but, like all, it was like All Might versus uh, One for All or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a pretty like, good fight okay. scene, though. Um, but this one was Tanjiro and Nezuko versus Rui in, in Demon Slayer. So, like, that was a pretty epic, you know, multi-episode fight. I could, I could get behind that. I could dig that. it. It's like, not very many shows have, like, a... <clears throat> Something that would fit that category, though, so it's, like, super oh, arbitrary. You mean something that would fit a shonen show? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is the audience that they're catering to at these awards? Yeah. I mean, like, it was against, like, Levi versus the Beast, Beast Titan. Like, that was cool, that was but that cool. was also, like, that was, like, two minutes long. Yeah, yeah that's it was, true. It was over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was cool. It was cool, but though. Anytime Levi fights, it's cool, though. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You mean anytime Araragi fights? against Ooh. the titan they have the same yeah. va don't they yeah um next best couple kaguya shinomiya and miyuki shirogane from love is war okay like um, they're really arbitrary so they're not, they're not an actual couple <clears throat> yeah they are on screen at the same time. it says so <laughs> it says they're a couple it so. um so not it is. Yet, i'm uh, triggered is. But I'm studio triggered right now. <laughs> also, why is best couple a category? This feels like it's a they threw this in just to give another award or sorry, so like, an could, award. Don't to put your truth on yeah. me. So could like yeah. now Fumi and like Reptalia, they're not a couple, but could they like were they nominated for this category? No, it's like here, I'll put I'll throw in the nominations <clears throat> that way if you guys want to see them too. Um But uh he's dying. I feel like I'm they did this to kind of highlight um, same-sex couples uh, as like a, a nod towards you know them being progressive. Oh, oh did they I put see. did they put like stars uh, on my Amir, couplings in there or something? Amir and Historia, yeah, and Rayo and Mavu, yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay, you know, yeah, they've got an agenda. I can see, but the. Yeah. Honestly, just adding this in there is kind of like, all right, well, you put in all those same-sex couples and neither of them won, so <laughs> way to go. Yeah, Ymir yeah, and Historia, yeah. great, great Wait, couple. Do you know, they couple put, in they... season three because they totally interacted <laughs> throughout yeah. the season. Yeah. <laughs> in the wrong season, yeah, so too, much. yeah. Like, Ymir doesn't even fucking show up in that season, right? Like, I think for, I, like, I 30 think, seconds. Yeah. She shows up <laughs> once. In a, in a so, flashback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Honestly, oh Rayu gosh. and Mabo in Sarah Zodmai is like the only one of the of these that were nominated that like would make any I, sense. I honestly would have yeah. picked that over Kaguya yeah. and and yeah. Shiragane because they're not even a couple in the <laughs> anime. Yeah. And like Rayu and Mabo, it's like a super tragic story, and it's like actually good. That was like oh, a good um, story. Yeah. Blame. Not, not that not that Kaguya isn't good, but it's like it's because they're not a couple that makes that show because it's like awkward as hell. Just blame yeah. blame the Crunchyroll audience. They all yeah. voted for that. They hate the Kappa Boys. They hate the Kappa Boys. <laughs> um, Why? so and bring the Kappa Boys back. Next next category: Best Girl, Raftalia from Rising of the Shield Hero. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that voted for for that one in our awards. I think I might. Yeah, I don't remember. Or picked. maybe Alec did. I think I copied you on that one because you went first. <laughs> well. Two, half of us agree. Yeah, fifty percent. You, you guys didn't vote for Raftalia for your. I don't think. Well, I refuse person. to watch the show. So. Yeah. Well, you don't even know who Raftalia <laughs> I vote, is. I vote for mine as the best girl. Oh, get get, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> You're done. You're done. <laughs> go You're drink your. Go drink your malty beer in uh, <laughs> over done. there. You're uh, dead to me. Best boy. Beer. Another one. Best boy is a Tanjiro Kamado from Demon Slayer, I believe. I that was my, that was uh, my pick. I I think I selected him too, uh, for for best boy. I don't remember what I picked. Best male character. I have so uh, best opening right. sequence, ninety nine point nine in Mob Psycho one hundred two. That was one of my choices as well. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. a good one. It was good boy. Yeah, it was, it was good. good. Mark picked a lot of uh, Bob Psycho stuff. Uh, yeah. Mark is good. the reason yeah. that this list is... Boy. Yeah, I, I voted like a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> he made 100 different accounts <laughs> on Crunchyroll and voted. I just made a bot that just voted like a thousand times. I, I have to I have to wow. look at what yeah. some of the other nominations were for... Uh, for the OPs? Me and Carol and yeah. Touch Off, Promise Neverland, Old Mob boy. Psycho, okay, I could... uh, Kawaki, well, I'm like, didn't you choose that one, the Domestic Girlfriend one? Yeah, I He did. picked Inferno, you picked Fire Force. I picked Fire Inferno. Force, but uh, uh, honorable <laughs> mention definitely was uh, the Domestic Girlfriend mm -hmm. opening. Girlfriend that, that's domestic. That, that opening mm -hmm. is lit. Mm -hmm. um, not as lit as Fire Force, literally lit. Um, <laughs> so... Best ending sequence. The uh, Chica dance. The Chica dance. Chikato Chica Chica. Chiki dance. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that, but that was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised this one. It's Everyone a one-off gimmick, but Chica. it was yeah, that's that's. But the it thing. paid yeah. off. The, this is the the modern uh, Haru Haru Yukai from yeah. from yep. uh, Haruhi. 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 Just yeah. the, the modern day version. Yep. Essentially, so like. Yeah. The next anime mm -hmm. convention you go to, you'll see girls dressed up as, as Chica and Chica. trying to do the dance. Chikey. Although they'll need a table to do the dance. They just need one table. That's all they need. Somebody to carry around for him. And a hat. And a bug. And a bug. And a bug, yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, that was stuck in my head for like <clears throat> like weeks afterwards, though, so I'm not going to lie about that one. All right. It was good. good. Uh, best performance by a voice actor, I'll English. Billy Kamitz as Nao Fumi in Rising of the Shield Hero. I can't say anything you about English dubs English. Yep. because I don't sure, watch you it. Win. You get a pass. Yeah, you, did, you did good. <laughs> good job, Nao Fumi. Um, I just want to look at the, uh, the actual nominations for English voice actor because I'm going to guess. Oh, never mind. Didn't Sorry, Faye Mata win that last year? As the Aqua? Did she? I thought she won something last I, I year. I feel I just feel like we always have the same voice actor winning uh yeah. <laughs> Usually it's, is, yeah. uh Vegeta's voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Baker. He, he's, no, yeah, not he Troy was not on this one, <laughs> No, he wasn't on the list this year. Not Troy Baker. Baker. <laughs> um the voice actor, yeah, Troy Baker. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Chris Sabat. Yes. Chris uh, Baker. No. <laughs> yeah, his brother, Chris Baker. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, yeah, Chris and Troy. I don't know what I walked into. 
<laughs> you, I, I don't know what you walked into either. The dynamic duo the dynamic of voice duo. acting, Chris and Troy. Yeah. Anyways. Baker. Uh, Baker. Best performance Baker. by a voice actor Japanese is uh, Yuichi Nakamura from As Bruno Bucciarti in, Jojo. in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind. I need to catch Bucciarti. up to JoJo. I don't. Watch I'm JoJo, so I have no idea how good. We should we should watch JoJo. And uh, or we should watch JoJo. Too long. <laughs> it's too long. Dude. It's it's really long. Too long. I would so... rather just read the manga instead. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd probably rather read the manga. I bet it's good. Uh, I mean, this show's good. So it should be. I've heard <clears throat> I've heard a lot of people enjoy the JoJos. Um, best fantasy. JoJo's sick. Promise Neverland. <laughs> Can agree sure. with that. They're There's like good. a handful of fantasies. And what, yeah. 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 <clears throat> Best comedy is uh, mm. Love Is War. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like the Found one that. comedy series of the year. <laughs> like I'm not like not to say it's uh, bad. Like I I do love like this anime and I've been talking about this this series for forever. But yeah. not Five Siri. Ever. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> go go away. Series. Um. But like, it was like the one comedy that aired all mm. of last year, so it's gonna win the category, category. of best comedy. <laughs> comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, best yeah, drama. Sarah's on my was a, a comedy. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't yeah. know if I agree with that Definitely. nomination right there. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I just have to look at this. Given <laughs> is oh no, that's best couple. Never mind. I'm just looking at the wrong category. <laughs> Best comedy, yeah. Isekai Quartet, okay. Came out the year before, was there a second? Was that a second season of Agretzka? I thought it came out the year before too. Okay, Dumbbells, yeah, that was a comedy, but it's like, it's like, it, like honestly, if we're gonna choose any of this list, like there were like what two actual comedies? <laughs> be Dumbbells, which is not really a comedy, it's like kind of half comedy, and then Kaguya, which is just straight comedy. <laughs> but anyway, he's a cat. I don't know. Um, best drama, Vinland Saga. Okay, you know I can see that, and yeah, I can also good. see where Mark would say that. Um, uh, what was Mob Psycho? Mob Psycho, Mob Psycho. should have won uh, best Dororo. fantasy or best uh, drama. You said no, 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 Dororo. Oh, Dororo should have been, been in there. Oh, should have been but in there. Yeah. Also, Promised Neverland is also in there too. Um and Babylon, I mean, I those, those, Babylon. Are all, those are pretty good shows. Yeah, Promise Neverland was really good. Uh, I mean, is, like, yeah, as great as Vinland Saga is, I don't know if I would count it as a drama. I wouldn't. That's, I don't know. I I feel like they're it just its own category. I would put no, that. Like, like, I would put that in drama or fantasy, or just straight action. But like, I mean, I, like it's really hard to. To categorize these shows because there's Sane a lot of Sane and show like it. Yeah, yeah. They should just make it. Well, a, yeah, like if you're best, like adult, it's, like it's mature like show or something. They're they're taking these categories that don't really pertain to a lot, like the bulk of the shows. Yeah. One like it, la- like it. year to year they're different too. It's yeah. like Last year we had different categories, and this year it's like there's no consistency. There is no consistency. <laughs> yeah. I I would be fine with them using different categories if it's. Because they had a, they're trying to fit the bulk of the shows into the categories, but I would say if you look at this list of of best drama, um, I don't know if I would put Vinland Saga in there. I would what say the other show, the other shows, are Stars Align, Carol and Tuesday, Promise Neverland, uh, Fruits Basket, Vinland Saga, Babylon. Yeah, Stars Align is a. That's a that's, drama. A, that's legitimately just a drama. Yeah, that's just straight drama. <laughs> and it's like Carol and Tuesday and is it's a dramatic and a drama. Yeah, yeah, putting Carol and Tuesday and Babylon in the same category, those are two vastly different shows. Yeah, and I Vinland mean. Saga. Yeah. Yeah, and Vin, I, I mean, just like they shouldn't belong in any sort of category. It's like we have two, we have two basket versus Vinland Saga, which we was, have like. Sh- we have like two ends of the spectrum. We have like super super specific categories, and then like. All these shows in these like not specific Rod. categories that are like 
should not be even in there. They but they need, just like, the have to. Crowd. They just picked it and they're like, oh, we have to. Like, oh, we have to fill these. Show. We have to include these shows show. were there. We have to. We have to have them. Yeah. Uh, if for best drama of the ones they just listed, Stars Align probably should have gotten that, because that was like the truest drama. Super dramatic. I could it's, I could see an argument for Carolyn Tuesday, like despite the rest of us dropping it. I do know <laughs> that like a lot of people ended up really liking it. Um, mm. It's just that the lowest point was the part where we all dropped it, which was the the Mars brightest uh, arc. Huh, ironic. Yeah, not the brightest <laughs> spot for that one. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Um, so best director goes to Tetsuro Araki f- and uh, Masashi. Koizuka for Attack on Titan season three. Sure. Okay. I can, I can, I can, I can sort of agree it. with that. Yeah. I feel like um, if I look at best director, let's uh, see. Sarah's on my. I like Sarah's on my. I like Sarah's on my better. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just. You know, like Shinichiro Watanabe um, for Carolyn Tuesday, <clears throat> despite like the weakness of yeah, yeah. the the sort of second core of the series, um, like the actual episodes had very good direction, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for the most part. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like a like who like th- this is one of those categories where it's like who's really looking yeah, at best direction in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in these shows. This isn't like do do the majority of watchers know what direction like takes place in in an anime like this and like and how it works. I, it's like yeah, yeah like you've seen not... Shirobako, right? The, mm-hmm. like that's like a very small glimpse into like an actual production. So, yeah. I don't I don't know. Yeah. This is just like a like, shoe user... in category. Yeah, yeah. It's this is kind of like what, what was uh, your your favorite that seemed to have good direction. Yep. So best score, Maki for Carol and Tuesday. See, um, I mean, for a show that's all about music. Yeah. You you mean you're not gonna choose Ohio Sakai? <laughs> God. Well, they said best I score, would. not best that, theme that song. That was the only song that you needed from Dr. Best Stone. Best score. Honestly, oh, you're not wrong. There's no music it's, otherwise. They, sh- they should have There's just played no that song. There's no music in that show until the show. end. Right, There's well, no music I'm until they gonna, play the They did not even nominate Dr. Final. Stone for best opening sequence, right? So they can't... <laughs> it clearly yeah. wasn't good enough. That's because yeah. it was best anime of all time. And they just didn't want to <laughs> like if they had put it in every other category, it would have won 100% guaranteed. It's drama. It's comedy. It's dramedy. I, I just have Action. to say that I probably would have chosen Demon Slayer for, for best score. Um, I believe I did choose Demon Slayer for best score. I don't remember what I chose. <laughs> on our, on our awards. Uh, next one is bullshit. Next one. <laughs> best protagonist, Senku and Dr. Stone. What the? <laughs> like what? So you have best boy, best girl, best couple. Now we've got best protagonist and best antagonist. They chose that over Emma. Emma yeah. and fucking Tanjiro. Wait, like, what? I'm. Yeah. So the nominees are Emma, um, Heike, Heike Mar- Dora Doradora, whatever, uh, Saitama from One Punch Man Season 2, Senku, who won, which is stupid, Tanjiro, and um, Toru Honda from Fruit Baskets. Yeah, uh, Emma. Emma, uh, like pick. I think Emma's a, a lot of like what we picked in our mm-hmm. awards. So, I mean, who's better at pushing the story than Senku? No one. <laughs> no one. Get, 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 Senku get did out. the best job Fuck Senku. Fuck Senku. of any character ever <laughs> no. in the entirety of anime in pushing no, no, a story. No. Why? It was groundbreaking <laughs> fourth wall destruction. Like destroyed to, the fourth wall. Just I you felt really find a, a he was appropriate copy me. pasta and, no. and every time Dr. I'm just gonna Stone create it. No. Okay. Yeah, right. create it. Mo- moving on. So best antagonist <laughs> Sorry, is Isabella. You wouldn't from say the that Promised Neverland. Face. Best antagonist Isabella from Promised Neverland. 
So <laughs> is she like really the antagonist though? It's like she she is because she's like forced into being like that main villain of this season. But overall, like she loves Raymond. Like it's her fucking kid. Yeah. Okay, it's just looking at this list, like I yeah. feel like Ascalad should win. Ascalad, Ascalad should have won this one hands down. Ascalad is like you... the the most fleshed out character of these antagonists. Yeah, you love the guy, but you also fucking hate him, yeah. and like He's it's really hard to do that for a bag. character. Dude, I mean, like... I'm surprised that this is what what Crunchyroll thought of. Like all the viewers were like, yeah, Isabella, that's the I one show that I watched out of this list. I didn't, didn't watch like Vinland Saga. Over, overhaul, <laughs> overhaul. I mean, uh, yeah, whatever. I don't overhaul. think I'm surprised. <laughs> like yeah. by by these I awards mean, and the. Right. choices yeah yeah ask ask that should have won that one yeah uh, he's antagonist. a good character yeah. he's a very good good antagonist hold on yeah uh, definitely. i'm busy at the moment sorry <laughs> definitely uh, one of my okay. favorite characters uh, in Vinland saga not right now <laughs> maybe maybe later um <laughs> maybe, in a little bit. maybe in like maybe in like 30 <laughs> sorry minutes, about 20 that minutes. <laughs> um all right so what we've all been waiting for, anime of the year. Demon yeah. Slayer. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I think I picked this one. I, think I, I, picked, okay. I figured this one was going to... pretty sure I, I picked it was going to win. And, yeah. It's I picked, a good uh, anime. I can't be mad about it. It has to be yeah. on this list. Okay, it yeah, is. Yeah. I, I picked <clears throat> Promise Neverland, I believe, for, for <laughs> mine. What was the total? Who were the nominees? Uh, it was Demon Slayer, Carolyn Tuesday, Mob Psycho 102... Oh, Maidens in Your Savage Season. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Vinland Saga and The Promised Neverland. Maybe take out the, one. Okay, Oh, Maidens in Your Savage Season, just because it's an Okatamari penned uh, story doesn't mean it's going to be the best anime. We already talked about how, like, if you want to listen to the shot we made on our series impressions for this, like, mm -hmm. it is not a anime of the year nominee no <sighs> not a consistently good anime it was good for parts but definitely not moments. what i would consider to be the best no definitely one of not. the best i should say no at least it I didn't mean, win yeah. those yeah. are tough choices at to least honest, it didn't like, win those are some tough choices i think i mean some big toughies i, I just those wish that honestly dr stone should have been in there <laughs> no no Stop. No, no, no. And it should have won. I'll never stop. Quit, never quit stop. embarrassing yourself. I'm, I'm not. I'm right. And everyone knows I'll that. I'll be right back. I've had enough. He's had enough. <laughs> All right. I think Walmart grabs another beer. Let's finish yeah, off yeah. the news. news. So, live action Keep Off, Keep Your Hands Off, a Zokin film <clears throat> uh, reveals a May opening as a TV series spin off. So, the movie is slated for May 15th. And will also receive a short live-action TV series, a, um, okay, airing in April. So not only My is it getting April. a live-action movie, but it's getting a live-action TV series. Mm. The three main girls will be played by idol group members of Nogi, uh, Nogizaka Forty Six. So that's going to be interesting to see, and that's an interesting tactic they're doing to uh, try and get people to to watch. It's uh, bad. Okay, Sonic. now that Mark's back, we can talk about Sonic the Hedgehog the film. It earns fifty-seven million USD. Billion. Sonic. Best Sonic. video game movie debut Should've ever called, in the U.S. Should have been called Senku the Hedgehog. No, no more Doctor Stone. <laughs> oh, God. Mark, you saw this movie, right? Sonic. I did. Yeah, I saw it on Saturday, and it was pretty good. I liked it. Um, is it I, good I or is it just fun? Because <laughs> sometimes it's like that wasn't very good, but it was, was fun it, to watch. Was it like it was, like Doctor Stone? It was, it was actually a pretty good show, a pretty good. <laughs> was it um was it like Detective Pikachu? Like Detective Pikachu is like kind of good, kind of fun video game sort of vibe going on, but with like an actual story. I like there was like an actual story. I think it was it was definitely fun. But I think, like, it wasn't overly cheesy. Like, it had some mm. cheesy moments. Because, I mean, like, it's 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 a kid's movie, you know? Like, yeah. it, it had some cheesy moments, but it didn't overdo it. The jokes in it were pretty funny. Like, there's obviously, like, some 
older innuendos that you know if you were like a kid you wouldn't really get it would that flow past your your head but i mean you're not getting you your puny yeah. brain yeah you pick up on it but like in in like the character like everybody in the movie is like pretty pretty good actors so i mean yeah i think it was actually a pretty good movie uh story-wise was decent were they yeah. rolling around at the speed of sound uh, <laughs> yeah, I was really waiting for like deja vu to like pop up somewhere. <laughs> um, you got but to you go. know what I you gotta follow yeah, your speaking rainbow? of music, yeah. I, I were like I wanted some more like classic sonic music. Um and they only mm -hmm. played it like at the beginning, I think. So they had the sonic ring so sound at the music least, is right? so good. Yeah, like yeah, the, of course. Okay, they had like Definitely. those classic noises. Yeah. Nice. I haven't seen yeah, this movie. Yeah. I'm just saying yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Like when you start like rolling and like 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 uh, speeding up uh, in the ball form, yeah, you get like the, some of the sounds in that. Yeah, nice. Like it's like, pretty good. That'll nods, be but, Yeah, I wanted to like some it. classic like Green Green Hill Zone music, but is it in 40x? Alas, there was. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't really know what it is. Maybe he wanted, yeah. He, yeah, he wants that shaking. would actually be a good movie for that though. Yes, Sorry, yeah, that, I, that not, not weathering with you. Uh, <laughs> Water just splashing in your face all the time. Nice. That's just Sonic spit and sweat flying onto your face. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, last piece of news: Castlevania animated shows third season <clears throat> premieres uh, premiered in a video. There is an Anime News Network link. So Netflix began streaming a promotional video on Friday for the third season of uh, Adi Shankar's Castlevania animated series. <clears throat> I did not know that Castlevania was animated. I thought it was a live action series. <laughs> I had no idea that it was <laughs> it's on Netflix. At all. I thought it's the Netflix, Netflix series was uh, was live action and not animated. No, it's yeah. animated. That's that's the Witcher <laughs> series. So I know Witcher. the Witcher is the live action, but I thought that the Castlevania series they were doing was. Well, you're wrong. Action. It just feels like <laughs> you would do uh, Castlevania as a live action. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I've heard I've heard the show or this yeah the series is pretty good, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it. It's on my list to watch. So at one point, I'll watch mm -hmm. it. At one point, mm -hmm. so never. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, uh, maybe. No, let's be honest. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> were you gonna watch Nisei Monogatari before we cho we got chosen? I would have finished watching it at some point. Yes. After the first season, no. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Definitely. But that wasn't on your backlog though, like no. it was for Mark. No, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't even on my yeah, the, radar. Yeah, the backlog. All right. It wasn't on my backlog's backlog. Now that mm -hmm. news is over, moving into our happy hour. So, shows. It's halfway through the season. Um, what what do we want to talk about? We've got Pet, Dora Hidoro, Monica, <clears throat> Twenty Two, Over Seven, My Hero, Inspector. So, what do we want to talk about first? Pet? Are we are we all caught up on Pet? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So, speaking of shows that have bad subtitle formatting, this show, whenever <laughs> any sort of Mandarin shows up, you <clears throat> see a Japanese subtitle overlaid by an English subtitle. Great, so great idea, guys. <laughs> Luckily, there's not like a ton of it, but yeah, when it does have it's frustrating. It's, well, in this episode, the latest episode, there was a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. they were speaking like, in Mandarin the whole time. Yeah. yeah, it was terrible. And not not formatted the best. No, no. Yeah. But this this episode did have that very awkward scene on the yacht where they're like, "You guys gotta take off all your clothes before you come on here," and there's yeah. just the naked puppet child. That just like yep. can't think for herself. Yep. Like and okay, and he's, he's, she's standing right in front of him. fat old man's donger. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I I feel bad for that girl, man, because it's like we get that that peek inside of her her mind palace yeah. area, mm -hmm. and then her it just palace. quickly turn turns into like well, you get like a peek into like her Persona past, yeah. her peak. <laughs> Not yeah, really a her, peak. Well, I think it was in the past where, like, I think that, like, she was, like, just falling into her valley, like, unknowingly, like, and then, um, what's the guy, Hay Hayashi, I think? Hayashi. He came in and, like, saved her. But, dude, like, her valley looked really creepy, like. No, I think then, that's her peak. 
that I think her peak and her, her valley are, are connected. It's like, yeah, that's like the whole reason, the like whole why reason. she's like doesn't move and uh, why she's essentially uh, crushed. And why it's just, she's a puppet? Like, yeah, yeah, man, they can easily so manipulate her. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, what they the want. Bad they bad wanted like a super controllable pet, essentially. Anybody could use her as a as mm -hmm. the the pet. So yeah. to speak. Man, it's, kind of it's very fucked up. Yeah, this show I, is feel complicated. Bad, like, yeah, <laughs> like the whole like pet system, mm -hmm. like not the fact that like you know they they're able to like read minds and manipulate memories. Uh, the the like hierarchy and like how that's almost like a subservient uh relationship we talked about it last week yeah, yeah it's, it's, that it's that really thing weird. Just, it still just throws me for a loop it's just, just like mildly mm. uncomfortable and uh really odd <laughs> yeah it's like master servant almost really slavery-esque yeah. well it's master or er, master and pet yeah master and pet yeah like a dog Poor Rusty. Yeah, it's it's just so so weird. Look at him sleeping so sleeping. peacefully. Oh, he would yeah. do anything for me, though. <laughs> he would. He is your uh, her, uh, uh, Hiroki. Yeah, her, Hiroki is like yeah. oh, it's an, an untold. Hiroki is literally a dog in human form. He's just screaming <laughs> and licking his master all the yeah. time. I saved you. <laughs> Hiroki. Gosh, Hiroki is just such He's, an unbearable character. Yeah, it's not a fun character. But it's, but it's like it is. It's how it is, though, yeah. right? It's that like is, how that character can't help it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. what it's, it is. He's literally dependent like, on. He was born like this a way. mindless, a mindless idiot staring at you know something, the wall. He was born yeah. this way. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was born without the ability to create memories. Yeah. Well, um, the show is uh, cool and weird. Speaking mm. of, you know, other pets, uh, was it Satoshi? Is that his name? Or Satoru? Satoru? Yeah, the, the guy who's sick. Yeah, I think yeah. it's Satoshi. No, it's Satoru, Satoru, right? I, um, I actually really like his character, but now mm. Tsukasa wants to kill him off. Like, He's like crap. <laughs> it's like, dude, this is this guy is like the mm. the one like decent character that's been fleshed out. And he's like, all right, I want to kill him off. Kill him. <laughs> kill him. It's like, all right, cool, dude. Just because you're a little jelly. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. he's a big jelly boy. He's a big jelly so, boy. So, so, Toru is the dude who used to be blonde, and then so Tush, he's the other black-haired guy who is now gray-haired, right? No, that's Sukasa. Sukasa. Shit. Yeah. Which one's so, yeah, Sukasa is the one. Uh, I, I think it's Satoru. I, I just wasn't sure if it's Satoru. Satoru or Satoshi. Yeah, it's Satoru. Yeah, um, yeah. But yet, like, I actually really like his character. Because, like, yeah. he, he's actually, like, trying to be more dependent, and he's not, like really looking at hayashi so like hayashi like i guess he had a previous master of his own that nobody knows about but like he mm -hmm. became independent i feel like that's what satoru is becoming right um, yeah Skas is sort of like that but he forced his way into it and is <clears throat> kind of just fucked up in the head he's just crazy. like mm -hmm. after all of that yeah, yeah. I also feel like Satoru doesn't exactly want to be part of like the the company. He's trying to solidify himself as being sort of like not exactly pet subservient person, but like I feel like he has no choice, so he's kind of going along with things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, exactly. Like he wants to develop like his own personality, but um, Sukasa is like trying to play the game. Like he's just, <laughs> just lost the game. The game. He's uh, lost he's game. trying to climb, you know, the, 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 company, the ladder yeah. of the company. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which makes him kind of a shitty character because he's doing some kind of shady, shady stuff. Yeah. Some shady shit. Yeah, he's so, some murderizing anti-hero because he's like the main character, but yeah, he's doing some pretty yep. messed up shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shady uh, shit. Well, uh, let's move on. So Doro Hidoro, I still am not caught up on this, but what are you guys? What are you guys' thoughts? It's dope. It's continues to be really good. Um, there's like nothing wrong with the show. It's just like it's good. The action is good. The world building is super cool. Mm -hmm. Character design is really good. And like the animation is excellent. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's like yeah. it continues to say if you like gritty, watch. dark, dark themes and like cool characters and doing cool stuff. It's like the show for you. It's like, yeah, sure. it's one of those ones where like if you're into a very unique type of world and it's it 
being fleshed out very well. Doro Hodoro is doing that, uh, you know, phenomenally. Like week to week, you, you learn more about the entire world. You just kind of want to know what's going on because, mm -hmm. you, like, you still have questions about what exactly is going on mm -hmm. and like who the characters are and whether like who exactly they're trying to find. Um, yeah, but it, it is just fun to watch because the characters are fun and funny. Beast Two is still like, like oh, ridiculous. <laughs> She's so, so, so weird. She's so weird. <laughs> I like her. She goes, barf. Yeah. It's like, let me see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. She's so weird, but she's like cool. All the characters are super cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, Madoka uh, or Magia Record, as we should be more specific. Uh, are you guys keeping up with this show? I am caught up. Mm -hmm. It is continues to be good. Continues to be magical. Yeah, I think I'm one episode I'm behind. Thanks, Mark. Right. Mark I'm... is one episode behind. Okay. Thanks. The so. stuff that happened this week is interesting because it kind of like fleshes out like the difference between like the rumors and the witches. Uh, mm -hmm. So we we sort of get like the start of that, which mm -hmm. is the question that we've all had kind of going the, forward. And the different faction that's mm -hmm. kind of behind all of it. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they also flesh out more about the whole. Um, turning into witches temporarily thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. From the previous episode. From the previous, yeah. Yeah, I need so, to watch this. Then. I would yeah. say you should watch it. Yeah, it was yeah. yeah. I'm liking the show a lot though. Any other thoughts? Um, no, I don't know. It's just like I'm really enjoying kind of the when in this episode where they had all the like the witches talking like about the water. I don't know what it is. Whenever they have those scenes, like the chain. The chain, um, what was it? The chain witch, whatever. And they, you know, when the chains all appear and they're talking, all <laughs> those scenes I really enjoy in this show. Um, I think they're really well done and they kind of like are like creepy and the sounds you hear in your head are really neat. So that's kind of fun. I'm my being big thing. messaged a billion fucking times right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that's just all I can think about it. I don't know. What do you guys, what what do you guys like about? about it all the characters are interesting um their powers and like interactions and like interpersonal relationships are really interesting um and we have like a lot more characters whereas in the first season of Madoki, mm -hmm. kind of have that one group whereas this there's like different factions and different characters involved in each it's not just like you know all these magic girls against these witches it's like magic girls against magic girls against rumors against witches so it's kind of got more going on um I, I don't think it's better than the first season, though, because I think it is kind of like it's very like linear. So like they go from one thing to the next to the next to the next, whereas like the first season kind of had like the overarching story that you're kind of led to. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think this is as good, but it's kind of interesting that you get like all these characters um, and their interactions with each other is, is good. Yeah, I think that was something I was kind of worried about, too, because like I, like I said, I played the, the mobile game for a little bit, mm -hmm. and it's like they had so many characters. I was kind of wondering how that could fit into like an actual show, um, because it could very easily be that like you don't really learn enough about characters, yeah. and it's just like a sort of a, a gimmick to, to try to sell a mobile game and have different character designs. Um, but I, I think I am liking the show a lot because it seems to be doing a pretty good job of, you know, fleshing out characters and like you get to learn about faction and stuff. Mm -hmm. um yeah i was a little bit worried about that definitely yeah i never played the mobile game but i could see that being an issue i i haven't really felt like i don't know enough about any specific character um you know it's like oh i feel like i should know about this person more because of what's going on but i've never really felt that they've fleshed them out well enough and anybody who needs mm -hmm. more gets more and people who don't don't <laughs> Yeah, Not I mean, like, there's time. bound to be like minor characters, of course, especially yeah. when you have many. But it's like the characters that seem the most interesting are definitely yeah. getting, you know, like proper proper setup and like backstory. And it's pretty compelling backstory too. <laughs> so at least it's like it makes you want to learn more about characters. Yep, I quite enjoy it. Mm. All right. Well, uh, what about twenty two over seven? Are you Not guys caught up? Caught one up. behind one behind uh, one behind i, I think like alec, I was gonna... <laughs> yeah i think alec had a good idea for this show i think we should come back to it at the end um because right now it's doing classic idol anime where it just goes from like character to character you kind of figure out more about their particular character mm -hmm. and where they fit like within the group 
Um, so this week we had um, the kind of red haired um, girl and how she didn't want to wear a bikini. So we had a full episode of that. <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. It was. It, it's the whole episode, though. Yeah, it, it is literally the whole episode. But I mean, so it, I it was fine. It? <laughs> no, it, it, like she actually has character development. Yeah, yeah, she has like good character, and her past is interesting, like with her uh, her father and mother and stuff. So, um, hmm. it's a good episode. Like the show's good. It's just not a ton to talk about until like we figure out kind of what what's going on about mm-hmm. yeah. yeah the mystery behind the, the, the wall. wall mr wall and this is uh kabu chan the wall kabe don't know boom <laughs> all right uh my hero wow uh no it's you good i'm caught up yeah i don't really ever have anything to say about the show school than... school festival now yeah festival what do they call yeah. it uh they said like like uh they had some short sort of like shortened word for the festival oh how they subtitled it i don't remember I, yeah i just did not read it and just like, like whatever it's called liz, uh, liz thought it was funny the the gentle guy because she was like kind of half watching what i was watching the, yeah i was gonna say that the they introduced i was Gen- gonna ask what you guys thought about the gentle criminal and la brava <laughs> <laughs> they're interesting yeah. i don't yeah. know i feel like they're yeah. gonna try to capture kidnap airy like, that shit at the end cracked happen. me up when he was yeah. pouring the tea and he kept lifting it up <laughs> and the tea just keeps going out. It is like hot. Yeah, <laughs> it just hits him in the eye. Also, Liz wanted me to point out that the dog who was in the police station was wearing a Dalmatian tie. He was a dog wearing a Dalmatian tie. Oh wow! <laughs> she like couldn't stop laughing at that. It was pretty funny. <laughs> and he's like a he's like a bloodhound too. So yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Wow, what a way to to wear products, uh, killing his own kind. Although he's actually just a human, but he's a, he's a, he's a human, yeah. Yeah, uh, he's got dog powers. Yeah, he's a human he's bloodhound. Powers. He's like the the guy, the the dog guy in uh, One Punch Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's dog. like super powerful. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, like I'm, glad, powerful. The, I'm glad you guys think the white dog? Uh, Gentle Criminal is is interesting at least because he's a he's a pretty unique villain. Um, I think he brings some some interesting uh, ideals to the my hero world. It's it's different than a lot of the other uh, villains that they've kind of introduced, mm-hmm. like who have like a very specific agenda. His agenda seems like to be kind of goofy. Yeah, yeah, especially coming off the back of the. Uh, the oh, infiltration arc, yeah, overhaul. Mm-hmm. Where he literally just wanted to eradicate all heroes and mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. He just wanted to eradicate yep. quirks. Right. La brava. Yeah, yeah. And then we get more of a uh, Jiro, who is like she's becoming a really cool character. Yeah. yeah. She seemed like a really like non fleshed out character that I was like, yeah. why is she like so heavily focused on in the opening? And yeah, then yeah. This now episode, I was like, "Oh, we're gonna find out more about her." Cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. I think she's It'll a be good cool. character. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. All right, now mm-hmm. we've come to the moment bum, bum, bum. Drew has yeah. been waiting for, which was <laughs> yeah. talk about Inspector. God, Inspector. what a terrible yeah. show! It, like, it's it's not bad. So like, it, it's it's. And I think it's like even worse for me right now because we're watching Monogatari at the same time. And Monogatari is like what this show is like trying to be like almost. And you even brought it up earlier, Rolando. It's like we had almost the same exact like theme going on um, in both of these episodes. But it's just like Monogatari does the storytelling really well whereas this show does not this show the storytelling involves the main character saying this is how things are (laughs) and this is the way that they have always been and therefore it is this and that is not good storytelling (laughs) we know basically everything about this villain right at the start we just don't know how she's going to defeat it and then the very ending of the episode she goes i gotta think really hard because all my friends are gonna get hurt if i don't solve this it's like great this is uh it's been and like that's not even like the worst part of this episode the worst part of this episode is it spent the first half of it telling us the exact same thing that happened on the previous episode it was literally a recap just told in a like a very slightly different way and i was just like why am i watching this this is like so bad so i think it's it's done enough i think i'm going to drop discount monogatari (laughs) i i kind of 
am still interested in seeing what happens. I think the actual content that is like underlying is interesting enough to keep watching yeah. for me. It's just that I hate the main girl. The main girl um, sucks. The main girl oh, sucks. She's just a cheap terrible. character. She's like, like what you said about the whole, she just sits there and explains everything. Like if the narrative was told in a different way, yeah. then it would be an interesting mystery show, yeah. but it isn't. And that is its biggest downfall. Mm -hmm. And having such a, like her character is just like, like, I don't, I just don't understand why she's the way she is. And cause she's a piece <laughs> of shit. Cause like she literally like, she yeah, is. I guess she's the God of the wisdom. Right. So mm -hmm. she has all of this knowledge. She can get all of this knowledge from whatever, but then she just like sits there and like talks. It's not even like really telling a story. Like she just it's sits like, there and talks talks and then at the, it talks at you. Yeah. yeah. Basically like you're dumb for not knowing this. Here's what it is. Oh, yes. thanks for that. It's like, I don't That's have a brain. I, I mean, can't read. Like, bugs me. I hated the whole part of the episode where they went over all the police information and then she was like, oh, let's go see this ghost who saw it. Yep, you're right. Oh, yeah, and he just oh. says that what the police said was correct. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought cool. it was going to, like, like it <laughs> Be <different>. usually, <laughs> usually when you have that sort of story moment. There's a twist. Like, you're supposed to find out, like, what really happened. And the fact yeah. that they yeah. kind of, they're subverting your expectations in the wrong way. Uh is just what's really irritating about it. <laughs> it's just like, hey, these are the things. Oh, I know a guy who saw it. And then they go over there and they're, wow, the police sure are good. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's it? Yeah, even nice. even what's her name is just like, wait, nice. so why did we like, come here? Why did we come here? <laughs> <laughs> when the characters, when the side characters in the show are more woke than the yeah. exactly. <laughs> It's, it's so stupid. The, so dumb. the other thing that bothered me about this episode was during so Kuro is walking a one-legged girl down like on his on his bike, like walking her back to her hotel, and then they suddenly go to a flashback where he talks, <laughs> where where like she's talking about his uh like I don't even remember what they talked about. Like I just know it was a flashback. Uh, because all of a sudden it's daytime and they're like by the river and then it cuts back to night just like suddenly and I'm just like why was this placed here and in this manner it was just straight hard cuts to this flashback and back to the, the reality it, like it didn't make any sense yeah no I like, have nothing to add <laughs> we talk about You're direction right. <laughs> in shows this show has yeah. very bad direction it's not good yeah no definitely not good it could be this so is... interesting it could be too good. and yeah. they could do so many little changes and it would be really interesting and it's not this is one of those shows where like the people that always scream read the source material it's like you know you probably should yeah maybe <laughs> This uh, might make sense, yeah, to yeah. read source material because you're gonna lose out on just random interjections by characters and small tidbits that just don't make any sense and don't provide anything to the story at all. Yeah, and you know, having a narrator might be easier <clears throat> talking at you instead of just this one yeah, right. girl. Probably. Yeah, girl with cane and eye. Girl with cane. Cane and iPad. <laughs> and, and, uh, Not even as good as girl yet. with cane from uh, Classroom of the Elite. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. I'll never get another season. Girl with oh, cane patch. Good. <laughs> good. Dude, I want dude climbing up yacht. I want him back. <laughs> that guy was ah, insane. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Laughing at the moon. Sounds like Count Chocula. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> One. <laughs> God. Two. <laughs> oh, God. Rolando, I, I will rely on you to report on what happens in this show because I, I don't think I can do any more. Yeah, I, I think I'm probably in that boat too. I just don't think I want to be subject it. to more bad storytelling. Um, <laughs> that's that's what it is. Like if it's if it was good. told in a better way, it would be an interesting show. But it's yeah, not. Absolutely. So it, it's not like, a good show. I I see where you're coming from, Rolando. Like I think that there's a lot of smaller parts of this show that are very interesting, like other side characters, and and yeah, like it's got an interesting premise, but it's just really poor storytelling, and it's it's uh, yeah, I'm I don't think I want to keep watching. All right.
Dropped. Dropped. The double the first, drop. The first double, double drop, drop of the season. Mm-hmm. I'll keep watching. All right. Not well, dropped. <laughs> not dropped. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, Just kidding. <laughs> Held silence. <laughs> All right. Well, very, I think very good. I think that about wraps up tonight's episode. So, very nice. once again, you can find all of our content on our website, animeondraft.com. Yes, you you can, can find a link to our Discord. You can find links to our social media. Basically, everything. One stop shop, animeondraft.com. Um, like I said earlier, the archive will be updated on there. Uh, <clears throat> like some of the links to episodes before one twenty nine. I believe uh, may be broken, uh, but we're, we're, we're going to go back and fix all that. So um, our Twitter is at MA on draft and whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Twitter is at anime on draft. If you want to be screamed at like that by your phone, um, <laughs> scream at Mark on Twitter and then he will uh, scream, scream back, back at you. Yeah, just re. Um, <laughs> our Instagram <laughs> is Anime on Draft Podcast. Uh, we're posting any other beers we're having during the week. I posted a picture of the, I think it's Barrel and Beans, uh, barrel aged, a Belgian triple or Belgian style triple from Allagash. Really good. Mm-hmm. Enjoy it. Um, Made out of beans. It. The podcast can be found on any podcast service uh, that you can think of. Uh, that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you name it. We're most Are likely we at Stitcher? least listed on there. Yeah. I forgot. So, yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, just just search. Keep, keep yeah. your on your toes. <laughs> keep, <laughs> just search for Anime on Draft. Um, our YouTube channel is Anime on Draft. That's where our Twitch VODs will upload to, as well as just finding them straight on Twitch. Once again, on Twitch, we're at twitch.tv slash anime on draft. Go ahead and hit the follow button and the little Smash bell it. icon to turn on the notifications to see when we go live. Currently, Smash our streaming it. schedule is Mondays starting around 7, uh, between 7 and 8 p.m., uh, which may flex into the weekend uh, if we're all busy. But Just depending... Last but not least, mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. you would like to contact us, you want to be on the show, you want to give us nice comments, you want to, I don't know, just say anything, yeah, go anything to our website, oh. hit the little contact page. There's a it nice drop-down menu that has your categorized uh, stuff. Like if you want to do a business inquiry, you want to be on the show, you want to just give a comment, go hit us up there. Or you can just directly email us at contact at animeondraft.com. And then if you would like to, please give us a five-star rating on whichever service you are listening on. Or just like, you know, YouTube comments. You can even post on our on our website posts or our podcast pages um, for each episode. Mm-hmm. We will take a look and uh, see what you have to say. We appreciate but, it. Or interact in chat. Uh, that's that's another option as well. It is. Yes. But I believe that wraps everything up. You guys have anything uh, left to left to add? Thanks. Discount Monogatari sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll leave it off with that one. Yeah, we'll just end there. Bye.